time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe
for joining us for our thirteenth online church service. It's good to see you, and I'd just like to welcome you here if you're new or if you're a regular. I hope that you've enjoyed it so far. Now there's a lot of work that goes into putting these videos together, so I just want to thank the team uh, for their hard work in putting a video every Sunday. Now the Friday night worship session was done by the Riddicks this week, so if you've missed that and you want to watch it, then you can go over to our Facebook page and you can find it there. Now if you don't know who I am, I'm John Cardinal. I co-run the youth group with Ross Penny. Now it must be the beard or something, but uh, we often get mistaken for each other. For example, I was at a, a youth event last year, I was bowling in Fraserburgh, and I went to go and get a drink. But when I went to pay, the car machine wasn't working, so I had a car reeling. Really. Uh, so the guy said he would come and find me once it was working. So I was away bowling, and uh, a while later, uh, I didn't realise, but the guy had came over with the, with the car machine and went over to Ross instead of me, thinking it was me. So I'd been a running joke, uh, but uh, aye, uh, unfortunately Ross never paid for my drink. It's kind of poor of him, like, but I let him off. Uh, and he was quite quick to get the guy over to me like when he realised what, what it was for. Uh, so it's happened a other couple of times as well. It normally happens when Ross is leading worship or something. I'll normally just get people come up to me and say, oh, well done for doing worship in it. So I get all these compliments. I've been quite honest with them and say, no, sorry, it's not, it's not me. It's uh, Ross you're looking for. Uh, but uh, I think sometime, next time I get it, then I'll maybe just take one for the team and just just accept it. I might um, see what happens. <laughs> see what happens. No, I'm just joking. Uh, anyway, uh, the programme for tonight, we have the Dunbar's Leader Worship. And we have uh, a special guest actually. Uh, I haven't met this uh, person, but I've heard lovely things about her. Uh, Gemma Hunt will be uh, reading a Bible story for the kids. And for our main speaker tonight, we have Julianus. Uh, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, Paulinus, uh, her warm up act. Just joking, Dolly. <laughs> Bob Force might say that. Uh, no, but Julie's a really good communicator and she's got a great testimony and she's been involved in several ministries involving the freedom for the for those bound of addiction uh, and she's been a real support for our church uh, St. Combs AOG over the past years and it's just a real privilege and honour to have her share with us tonight. So I hope that you enjoy tonight and I hope that you get something to take away from it. So I'll just pass you over to the worship team. Thanks. Your grace is enough Your grace 
She's a friend and a lovely, lovely person. Um, she's the real deal. So now, not only is she a lovely person, but she's a great pirate and she's good at telling stories, which is good for us because um, Pirate Gem is now going to want to tell everybody a story. So over to you, Pirate Gem. Ahoy there, my hearties. It's Jem here. It's time for today's Bible story. And this time you're going to need to get yourself a water bottle. So go and grab yourselves a water bottle, fill it with water and bring it back as quick as you can. Because I'm feeling rather thirsty. So what do you like to drink when you're thirsty? Maybe you like juice or squash. And grown-ups, do you like tea or coffee? or maybe something else at five o'clock in the afternoon during lockdown. <laughs> now there are lots of choices, but I think my favorite thing has to be water. And I do fancy a drink right now, but which bottle? Cause I've got quite a collection here and they're all different colors and different shapes and different sizes. But what do all of these water bottles have in common? What do they all do that's the same? Yeah, of course, they all hold water and all of them will help me out if I'm thirsty, as long as they're full of good, clean water on the inside. And actually, we're kind of the same way as people, aren't we? In that we're all very different on the outside, but the more important thing is what we are filled with on the inside. And this is what we can see in our Bible story today, found in the New Testament in John 4. And it stars this lady here. <laughs> Jesus was having an interesting conversation with a lady one day besides the well. He was thirsty and he asked her for a drink as she had come to draw out some water with her jug. Now there are a couple of reasons why it's slightly strange that Jesus would talk with her. One, she was a woman and in those days women were not really seen as equal with men. And two, Jesus was a Jew and wouldn't normally talk with her. She was a Samaritan and they're from different areas and the Jews and the Samaritans didn't really get on very well. But also, this woman had done some really bad things in her life and she might have felt ashamed about that and was maybe even suspicious about why Jesus would want to talk with her. But Jesus knew that this woman needed him. He knew that her heart could be healed and her life changed. He knew that it didn't matter what she was like on the outside, he could fill her inside. 
Jesus told the woman that he had water that would keep her from ever being thirsty again. Now she was a little bit confused by this and asked where she could get such amazing water. Jesus told her that he was the answer to what she needed. And he shared with her some information about her life that only she knew, revealing that he knew who she was. And she realised that this man was someone amazing. She was so excited that she left her jug and she ran off to tell all of her friends. And when they heard about it, they believed as well. <laughs> And we know that God wants us to, to share the good news of everyone about Jesus. And we can share that any day of the week. When Jesus fills our insides, it helps us to be kind and to share with other people because we know that Jesus will satisfy all of our needs. And we also know that we need to drink water every day in order to survive. Well, we also need the love of Jesus in our lives every day. And we connect with that by reading the Bible, so reading God's word, by living in his presence with our friend, the Holy Spirit, and of course, by praying. <laughs> so you go for it, my hearties, and I'll see you next time. Well, hello and good evening, St. Combs Church, and everybody that's tuning in online. It is so good to be with you tonight. It's not the same, obviously, as being with you in person, but it's so good to be with you all the same. So we are recording tonight. We had a little bit of an incident in our house a couple of weeks ago um, when Paul was recording a message for yourselves. And my one job that night was to press this button here, little wee button that you press that should have recorded his, um, put his phone on to record. And of course I took a photograph and I realized I went upstairs and left him to speak for half an hour to himself, which obviously <laughs> never went down very well in our house. But I am recording and it's it's great when you can see that you're on. Obviously, he never realised he was not on. Um, but yeah, we're on tonight and it's great to be with you guys. Um, I don't know how you guys are coping with this season that we are in in life just now this season of lockdown, this season of um, change that we're all experiencing. And each one of us are going through this change in our lives just now. Um, and if you're like me, which maybe you're not, and that's great, but I'm going to be very real with you tonight, um, if that's okay. But me personally, I have struggled in this season. It's been a time where I have been a little bit all over the place and um, some days I'm winning and things are going great and we are smashing homeschooling and we are managing to get dressed and out the house and get our daily exercise and life's good and there's no meltdowns in the house and it's great but the majority of the time I would be lying and saying that it's always like that because it's not and um, some days I am failing miserably. But I was speaking to somebody the other day, um, a friend of mine, and she says that her friend described it as the Corona Coaster. And it's funny, it really stuck with me actually. Um, I thought about that then for a couple of days after. How much it is like that, or it has been like that, and I'm sure we've all experienced it. We are on this roller coaster, now, normally when you go on a roller coaster, it's full, is it a uh, twists and turns and sometimes you're up here and sometimes you're down there and sometimes you're getting flung about and, but then you always come back, don't you, where you're able to get the bar up and get off of there as quick as you can. Um, but this is a wee bit like a, a roller coaster ride that we're on Um, we're not sure when we're getting off it. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of things that we are not sure of that is... Um, happening in our world right now but we have to be very careful what we allow to influence us so I'm meaning like be very careful in what you watch and be, be very careful in what you listen to I learned that very early on at the start of this fear absolutely was crippling me I've never known fear like 
I experienced at the start of this um, lockdown season. Um, fear was overwhelming me. I was walking up in the night, panicking, thinking, what if this happens? What if that happens? How am I going to cope with this? What if this happens? How am I going to navigate all that? And the reality is that I was allowing fear to absolutely cripple me. Absolutely. And I was very then learned that I needed to stop watching certain things. I needed to stop listening to, to certain reports that were on the television and, and different things like that because I was allowing them to influence me in such a negative way. And there's an old song, isn't there, uh, that the kids sung and it goes, be careful little eyes what you see, be careful little ears what you hear. And how true is that, that we need to be careful of what we watch and what we listen to and what we allow to influence us. Um, of course, everything changed, everything went online. We are living now in a time where we're doing church online, where you can tap into any church you want. Um, and initially, it was, it was kind of a novelty that we were able to maybe go to four churches on a Sunday it was it was an experience, but I was really struggling in them early days, and I had to be very careful for what I was listening to and what I was allowing to come into my home um, and what we were watching and listening to as a family. So fear was crippling me at this point. And then I was reminded of this verse in Hebrews 12, and I want to share it with you tonight. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says this, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And this verse absolutely spoke to my heart. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. What are we focusing on? Who are we listening to? Who are we allowing to influence our thinking in our everyday life? So these last few months have shown me that even if I am up here, then that's fine and that's good. But even if I'm down there and I'm struggling to get through every day then that's okay as well because God has got me and God has got us and he is in control. He's good, he is in control and I do not have to lose heart. I want to talk to you very quickly tonight on a message titled this, Fixing Your Focus. Fixing Your Focus. It's funny I was telling Paul at the weekend kind of how my thoughts were going towards what I wanted to share with you is. And then I heard Bob on Sunday night um, starting this new series that he's doing. He's three-parter and I thought, oh, it's kind of tying in with what I want to share with you. Is. But that's okay. I'm just going to pop in Bob and, and share a little bit. I hope you don't mind. But I was driving home um, a couple of years ago. Joel was a baby. We had been visiting my mom in Aberdeen and I remember this drive home this night. We got to like the Bridge on Roundabout and all of a sudden there was this thick fog. Absolutely thick fog. You could not see in front of you. It was horrible. I am not the most confident of drivers at the best of times. I don't like driving in the dark or snow or anything like that. Um, I'd driven in fog a few times. Normally, you could just turn your fog lights on and you were good to go. But this particular night, I have never known fog and I've never again driven in fog like it. But I remember this journey that would normally take me an hour to get from Aberdeen to my house in Rosarty. This journey this night took me two hours. And I remember driving and trying to fix my focus on the road in front of me. I couldn't see a thing. I could not see a thing. It was horrendous. The little bits of white 
lines in the middle of the road that you get, you could see a little tiny bit of them. And I was trying to fix my focus on them white lines. And if I can just follow them white lines, then I'm gonna go in that direction. My focus was so bad that I could have ended up taking a wrong turn and gone on another road that I wasn't meant to be on or worse than that, I could have ended up in a field. Um, it was horrendous, the drive that night. And how true is it that if we take our focus off of God, we can end up going in the wrong direction, a direction that's not good for us. You know, for me, I took my focus off of God and allowed fear to overwhelm me. Instead of fixing my focus on what God says about me and where he says that I am going. Sometimes we can be full of hope and expectation. We can see a clear path in front of us. We know where we're going. God, you've called us. I'm going here. I know where I'm meant to be. And everything's just brilliant. But then there's them times, isn't there, where we are just seeing little glimmers of hope. Little bits, little white bits on the road that we are holding on to. Little bits that we are relying on to take us in the right direction. Helping us to keep our focus on Jesus. Maybe we are believing God for a prayer that we've not seen an answer to yet. And we are clinging on to that little glimmers of hope that he has said that he will answer it. And I want to read a story to you from Matthew 14, verses 22 to 32. And it says this, Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up in a mountainside by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately says to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you in the water. Come, he says. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed him. You of little faith, he says, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Peter's experience offers us a helpful insight of the hope that is found in the Lord. As long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to stay above the water. When he took his eyes off of Jesus, he started to feel overwhelmed and started to sink. Yet he didn't sink so far that Jesus couldn't reach him. God's word is like that for us as believers. We live in a stormy world, don't we? More so now than we have ever known. Waves of financial despair, emotional upheaval, relationship issues and personal failures threaten to sink us and pull us under constantly. Yet if we fix our eyes on God's word, we can stay above the water. If we allow its words, the word of God to resonate above all the doubt, all the worry, all the conflict and uncertainty that nag us every single day, we can enjoy an extraordinary walk with Jesus. So how do we stay afloat? How do we fix our focus? I want to share with you very quickly some things that we can do that will help us to keep a fixed focus. And the first thing is this, we need to change our perspective. How much do we need at times to change our perspective? What are you thinking about? What are you allowing to feed yourself? 
Whose report are you listening to? What does God say about that situation? Change our, th our perspective. How do you view that situation? I remember initially thinking, I really need to get things into perspective here. God is good. He is in control. He's in control of my life. Not the coronavirus, not what the news says, not what these, the articles that I'm reading are saying. God is in control. And I had to change my perspective. My life's okay. My family are safe. We've got a roof over our head. We've still got our jobs. We've got food on our table. We've so much to be thankful for. And as you begin to change your perspective and how you view things, that feelings, that overwhelmed fear and, and different emotions that we've been experiencing begin to leave us because our perspective is different. Philippines 4 verse 8 says this, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Fix your thoughts on the good things. Put things back into perspective. Sometimes we need to do that, don't we? Sometimes we just need to take a step back breathe and put things back into perspective and we see things then in a different light that journey home that night for me i remember thinking am i even gonna make it home tonight am i actually gonna have to park in a lay-by with my baby and wait until this fog lifts or am i gonna just have to focus on this road and keep going until I get to where I'm going. And I had to change my perspective at night in the car. I needed a little bit of reassurance. I kept ringing uh, Paul every maybe 20 minutes and he'd say, Farah, yeah, I think I'm nearly at Mintla, I'm nearly there. Um, keep going, he would encourage me to keep going. Come on, keep doing it, you're nearly there. <laughs> you're nearly home. Um, and that's so true in our thinking at times. We need to just keep our perspective um, in the right place and fix our thoughts on the good things and put everything back into perspective. He is in control continually of our lives. The second thing we need to do is we need to fill our mind with God's word. Meditate on scriptures. Write down what God is saying to you during this season of life. A lot of people often say, that, you, that they don't hear God speaking to them, yet they don't open their Bibles. God will always speak to us through his word. And I know that it can be easy, can't it, to kind of read things every day and go on social media and we've got like so many different amazing preachers just now that are posting stuff every day and that's great and and we can tune in to stuff and, and that's uh, great as well. But we need to sometimes just be tuned into God's word for ourselves and for our situation. And, and what's God saying to us in this time? What is God saying to you daily for your situation that will help you get through each day? So we need to fill our mind with God's word. Isaiah 26 verse 3 reads this. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you and how true is that verse that when we fix our thoughts on him the peace of God the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will fill our hearts and our minds as we keep our focus on him so I would encourage you to pick your bible up and feed yourself good stuff fix your focus on his word and what he's saying to you every day for the season that you're in and for your family, a word for you in the situations that you're facing. Because each one of us is different, but we need to hear God's voice daily. We need to be tuning in to God's word and filling ourselves 
with good stuff, meditating on scripture, feeding ourselves on scripture throughout the day. I remember as a new Christian, I used to write scripture on my hand um, because we had to learn them for the the teen challenge um, classes that we were doing. It was part of our, our teachings to memorize memory verses, but it's something that's never left me um, as a Christian is to meditate on verses. So although I didn't need to write the verse on my hand now, it's, it's there. Um, but the importance of meditating on God's word and feeding our spirit with God's word daily is so, so important um, as Christians and is on this walk that we are on with Jesus. If we want to live an extraordinary life with Jesus, we need to be filling ourselves with his word. We need to be tuned in to what he's saying to us every day. And the third thing we need to do is we need to spend time in his presence. One thing I miss most about church is coming together to worship him, we, the church family, and just being in the atmosphere of worship. Um, it, it's really incredible, isn't it? And that's one thing that I'm missing, the warmth and the sense of God's tangible presence as we worship him together as his people. But we can tap into that presence daily. Some of my greatest breakthroughs in the journey, in my journey have came on my own in his presence, pushing through and wrestling at times with God. I remember years ago when I was on the, at the end of the Teen Challenge program, I had finished the program. I was um, I had been working probably for about six months as a staff member in Hope House and I had been going through quite, I had went through previously a grueling um, treatment for a blood disorder that I had contracted through injecting heroin for, for years of my life before I went to Teen Challenge. Um, and I was on a journey um, where I was going through this treatment and it was really quite intense and I had to inject myself every week and and it was quite challenging. And at this particular time, I was on my second lot of treatment. The first lot I hadn't worked and I had to go through this horrendous treatment again. And I remember I had been working for six months employed, um, but I had to go back onto this treatment. And it was hard going because the day before my injection was due, I would get really, really sick. Um, and then the day after, I took the injection, I would be in my bed and I couldn't do anything. Like I literally couldn't lift my head. Um, every Wednesday, I remember, would have been my sick day. Would have been the day that I took my injection and I was in my bed. And I remember at the time, my husband, who was now my husband or my boyfriend at the time, he, we were in the friend zone. Like I've never been in the friend zone, but I remember every Wednesday, Paul would message me an encouraging message just to keep me going, to keep my focus, not on how I was feeling and the the, the struggle or the sickness that I was having to deal with, but something that would encourage me to keep going. Um, and I remember this rug in my bedroom and it was a fluffy silver rug and I used to cut my prayer rug and I used to come in for a shift really struggling and feeling really poorly and I used to get on that rug and I used to cry out to God and I used to go on my knees and just weep before him and cry out to him and put on at the time it was Michael W. Smith album I remember it it was it, the, the Michael W. Smith and the Wee Total Choir album had came out and that was kind of the album at that season of my life that I used to play and and just get into his presence and experience a time just in his presence, worshiping him, thanking him for my life, believing him for my healing, which he did do in my life. And I'm so thankful for my health now, but it was a season really where I had to push into his presence. And, and we are in a time far, we more than ever are having to learn how to feed ourselves. We're at home, we need to learn how to get on our knees again and push into God's presence daily. Do you have the assurance tonight 
that God is in control of your life and your situations? Do you need to change your perspective maybe to fix your eyes on him and to be filled with his incredible presence? It might be tonight that you have that you don't know Jesus. Maybe you've never experienced this peace that I have spoken about. Let me encourage you that he will meet you where you are at. He wants to give you peace. You might feel like you have no focus. You have no direction. I want to encourage you that God wants to lead you and guide you into everything that he has for you. So we need to really fix our focus on him. Let me remind you tonight of some of the things that we need to do. And the first thing is this, we need to change our perspective. We need to get things back in order if we want to fix our focus. We need to spend time in his presence and we need to fill our mind with his word and be rooted deep in him. He will keep us in perfect peace, all whose minds are fixed on him. Let's fix our minds on Jesus. Let's fix our focus and our attention on Jesus. Let me leave you with a verse that I started with. It's found in Hebrews 12, verse 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Let me pray for you before you leave tonight. Lord, we thank you tonight that you are in control of our situations. You are in control of our life. God, you are in control of the direction that we are going. And Lord, tonight we just hand everything over to you, Lord. Help us to be people that keep our eyes fixed on you. Help us to be people that always know where we're going, where we're heading. Lord, help us to fill our mind with good stuff. Help us, oh God, to really just focus and be rooted into your word. Lord, we pray for those that need a touch from you tonight, Lord. We pray for those that are struggling with their health. God, we pray for those that are struggling financially. Lord, for those that are emotionally struggling, God, we lift them before you. We ask that you would do a work in their life. Bring healing. God, bring, bring perspective back again, Lord. And Lord, we pray for those that, Lord, are maybe here tonight that, that don't know you. If you're watching online and you don't know Jesus, maybe you've never asked him in your life. Maybe you've never allowed Jesus to be the one that's direct in your life. And I encourage you tonight to speak to somebody. Speak to somebody from a uh, message online, message to St. Combs Church. I'm sure there's somebody that would love to speak to you, give you some literature, maybe uh, just speak you through a prayer that can bring you into a relationship with Jesus. You see, when we're in a relationship with Jesus, our life is changed dramatically. We can have an extraordinary walk with Jesus. And I encourage you, if you've not made that decision personally, to get in touch with somebody, and I'm sure they would love to lead you in a prayer that can bring you into the most amazing relationship. So be encouraged tonight, and thank you for listening. God bless you all. Your 